to this green domain that is he in here, it maps one to one to this domain, which is uh, inside the circle, right? So that's the gamma equal to one circle, right? So all of the possible values of impedances inside this transmission line, you can find them inside this circle, right? Okay, so is that clear? Yes. It is clear, the way you're describing it. One of the quiz questions, though, I got confused. It asked if you're moving around the outside of the Smith chart, what does that mean? If, if you're moving, if you're going outside the Smith chart, it means one thing. If you're moving in the outer ring, the outer so if you're, uh, if you're moving in the outer perimeter, so that means that gamma is equal to one, right? So you will see what that means in, in a minute, right? Uh, do you have any other question? No. Or just that one, okay. So if, if it's not clear when I explain it, just let me know. Any other questions, right, regarding this? Is, is this clear? Okay, as I was uh, mentioning, right? So we define a gamma plane, right? So we have gamma values, so we have the real values here, and the imaginary values. So we define imaginary, imaginary values with the vertical axis, real values with the horizontal axis. So if we start making circles for resistant values, we're going to have these kind of circles, right? So this is R equal to two, so the resistant value is equal to two, you remember that it is normalized, right? And remember that gamma goes from zero to one, right? So you will see that in a minute. So if we plot r equal to 0 0.5, we have this circle. If we plot r equal to 0 0.2, we have this other circle. And if we plot r equal to zero, we have the outer, uh, outer ring of the Smith chart. So these are the limits of the Smith chart. So this, this is what you were mentioning, right? So if you are moving in this circle, if you're at any point in this circle right here, so the resistive value of your impedance is equal to zero, right? And you can start here. This is R equals zero, right? And you can see that if you move to this point, if you move across the horizontal axis, you can see how the circles, they get smaller and smaller, and they increase R, in, and R increases in value, right? Right? Is that clear? So if I, if I, as I move in this direction, and the circle radius is reducing, I'm basically becoming a point here. So this point basically means that R is equal to infinity. Yes? So this point right here is what? Open circuit, right? You see? And this point is short circuit, right? So remember that. Gamma is equal to one in magnitude, but it can have, if you read gamma here, it has this angle, right? So that's, a, that's the value of gamma. That's the actual value of gamma, right? But you can find the magnitude of gamma easily in the Smith chart by just making a circle in the Smith chart. So you can see as you move this way with the circles, so they, they are this kind of circles, right? So they go to infinity and this. So at the end, if you plot x equals zero, what do you think you're gonna see? It's like a circle with infinite radius, right? So it becomes just like a straight line. So this straight line right here is x equals zero. That means it's just, you have any imaginary values at your loading pins. Right? So for any x that you find uh, in these points right here, or in this region, for any x that you read in this region, you're reading inductive values, or positive values for x, anything that you read here, negative, right? And that's it. That's the Smith chart, right? So that's a, a pretty useful tool, a really powerful tool. Any questions about the Smith chart? Yes? yes? It's, I mean, it's the same question. Mm -hmm. around the outside and mm -hmm. OK, so, so I'll explain how do you move around the Smith chart. You can move, because you can move, if, is, I don't know if this is your question. You're asking how do you move if it's clockwise or counterclockwise? Right. That's the question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so usually by convention you move in this direction, right? To so move from this point to this point. So you move clockwise, right? So clockwise around the Smith chart 
it means that you're moving towards the generator, right? So because we're defining our reference location here, right? Our reference uh, coordinate system, if you will, at this point, right? So if you move in this direction, you're moving, we always say that you're moving towards the generator, right? If you move in this direction, you're moving towards the load. Since all of the equations are defined like this, right? Derivated like this with the zero or reference zero equal here at this uh, interface at the load. Anytime that you move clockwise, you're moving towards the generator, right? So you're following this convention. If you move counterclockwise in the Smith chart, you're moving towards the load, right? So there are certain considerations on how to re properly read the Smith chart depending on how you're moving. Uh, I won't definitely go into that here just to keep it short. But if you have any more doubts, just you can pro always either ask, go ask me during my open lab hours or just ask uh, Professor Don Levy, right? Okay, so before doing that, we measure the distance from the center of the Smith chart to the impedance and we plot a circle. We can use a compass for that, right? So we, that uh, radius, uh, that same radius circle, it will have the same, what do you think it's going to have? Any ideas what the circle represents? Center flexion coefficient, right? Yes? So is that clear for everybody? Yes? So this circle right here, this blue circle, has the same reflection coefficient in magnitude, right? So it has different faces if you read it at different points. 